Hey everyone, it's Steven. Today I have the 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E California Route 1. This is Ford's offering in the popular electric compact SUV market. Ford first debuted this in the 2021 model year, so it's now in its third model year, and it's still moving an impressive amount of units. This competes with things like the ubiquitous Tesla Model Y that you see everywhere now, also the Hyundai Ioniq 5, a newcomer to this market as well. If you had told me back in 2020 that Ford would become the second largest EV seller in the US, mainly due to the Mach-E, I definitely would have had my doubts. However, this attractive vehicle with a controversial nameplate is definitely an impressive vehicle. Let me walk you through it. So this one here is the California Route 1 trim, which gets you the longest range in the entire lineup, 312 miles of all electric range. That is quite impressive, a lot more than most competitors. It also gets you a cool full glass panoramic sunroof, unique wheels, and some cool California Route 1 decals. However, you lose out on some things like the Bang & Olufsen sound system, which is weird, and also a power liftgate. This one has a manual liftgate, which is pretty weird for a vehicle at this price tag. This MSRP is for about $63,000, but uh, this one has actually some crazy price decreases over the last six months or so. Uh, at the beginning of 2023, Ford slashed this price and then slashed it again recently to get down to about $56,000. That is almost a 10% decrease. That is crazy. Really in response to Tesla lowering their prices as well. So as tested, the one here, when the owner of this car bought it, was actually $65,000, but you would probably get it for closer to like $58,000. So the Mach-E California Route 1 trim comes with a 91 kilowatt hour battery, which is their extended battery pack. That is actually standard on the California Route 1 trim. So you, you actually have a choice to get a lower range battery, but this one comes with the extended range one with just a dual motor setup for all wheel drive. That also comes with a single speed transmission as expected from an electric vehicle. Puts out horsepower figures of 346 horsepower and 428 pound-feet of torque. That gets you 0 to 60 times without 4.8 seconds, which is quite fast, definitely better than some of the competitors out there. This all-electric setup gets you fuel economy numbers of 105 city, 91 highway for a combined 98 miles per gallon equivalent, making this one of the more efficient vehicles in its class. Now let's dive into the exterior of this vehicle. So I mean, when this car first came out and used a Mustang name, people were pretty upset, right? The Mustang is the two-door coupe from Ford, and this is nothing like that. However, you still get some nice, aggressive looks, right? This exterior color is called Shadow Black, pretty straightforward, right? And uh, for the California Route 1 trim, you actually get a unique grill with some of these interesting elements around here. Um, I, I think it looks pretty good because this car is completely all black, but I think in some colors it actually looks a little weird. I think the GT grille looks a lot better in my opinion. You've got a more interesting front. It looks a little bit more aggressive. You've got some pretty sleek headlights, right? I really like the headlights. The turn signals look good as well. Um, and you've got, of course, full LEDs there. Moving on to the side profile here, you can see that you've got some pretty nice aggressive uh, body lines, right? This car looks very attractive from the side profile in my opinion. That sloop roof line... <laughs> That sloped roofline in the back really complements the shape of this car. And actually, you still have a decent amount of headroom in the back, which is pretty impressive for this vehicle, right? This does fit four adults very comfortably. You've got the Mach-E X on the side, so kind of in, uh, indicating that it is an all-wheel drive vehicle. And it looks pretty cool, right? It has a cool little like graphic, I think. It looks good font. And uh, let's take a look at these wheels really quickly as well. These are the 18-inch fully blacked out wheels, and it actually has an aero cover over it. That's kind of interesting. I don't love it. It reminds me of the aero wheels from Tesla, which I really hate. But I think it looks good because this car is completely blacked out, right? They're actually aluminum wheels on the inside, and you do have an interesting uh, kind of metallic aluminum colored uh, brake caliper. But I think it looks fine. Not the most interesting thing. One thing you will definitely notice on the side profile of this vehicle is they're not even flush door handles. There are no door handles, actually. You have this interesting little insert that you can grab onto. Open the door is actually a button. That is quite a luxurious feature, right? I expect that from something like Bentley, right? So I think it's really cool that Ford was able to do that. Um, in the back, you actually don't even have a little grab handle. You just click it and then you open it. It's very easy to use. I think some people don't love this and I don't know. I've had a good time using it, but I think it depends on how willing you are to press buttons, I guess. Going to the rear profile, this is probably my favorite part of this vehicle. I think they did such a good job with this, right? You've got the awesome sequential turn signals, which are, you know, of course, a staple from the Mustang group. And you've got that Mustang. One thing you'll notice very quickly, right? There is no Ford logo on this entire vehicle, right? Kind of like what Jeep did with the Wagoneer. Uh, they want to differentiate this from just Ford, right? Ford sounds like a lower class vehicle, right? It's not the most interesting thing, but a Mustang is a special vehicle, especially for Ford. You've got the California Route 1 trim uh, badge, which looks pretty cool. And otherwise, I just, I love the look of this rear. They did such a good job 
paying a homage to the original Mustang, but keeping it, I mean, looking great for an SUV. You got a decent amount of trunk space as well. Again, no power lift gate on this one, kind of embarrassing, but you can fit a decent amount of things here. You've got about 24.7 cubic feet of cargo space. So about average in its class, you can put the second row down as well for closer to 50 cubic feet. You've got some nice Mustang logos in the back as a little bit of an Easter egg. Otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward cargo space. All right, let's go into the interior of the 2023 Mustang Mach-E. You've got those nice buttons to open it up. Pretty easy to use. I know some people have complained about it, but I personally like it. So this is the seat adjusted all the way back so that you can actually see and I can actually have some space. Um, but you know, you've got a pretty luxurious startup sequence, right? Look at those graphics, very clean, very uh, good FPS. <laughs> so starting it up, you do have a traditional push to start button. You do have some pretty annoying sounds when you start up. That sound that you hear right now is the uh, uh, seat belt warning. So it <laughs> took me a while to figure that one out, but kind of weird. Um, it's very, very annoying. So, I mean, you will definitely want to wear your seatbelt. <laughs> um, but yeah, going into the car, you do have a pretty luxurious looking, uh, impressive setup here, right? You've got the huge 15.5 inch tablet style display here and a 10.2 inch virtual gauge cluster. I don't really know if that's what I would call it. Let's kind of chat about that first. So this gauge cluster here is kind of interesting because it is pretty small. <laughs> um, you can kind of see like it, it's just barely enough to kind of fit through your little crack here in the steering wheel, which I think is the point. Um, but you can't configure it at all, which is actually very disappointing to me. I think when you compare this to things like BMW and Audi, which of course are luxury brands, um, but even like Hyundai and Kia, this, this just doesn't get you any configurability. It does give you everything you need. Though. You've got your range, your battery percentage, compass. This is your adaptive cruise control in the middle and uh, you've got the speedometer on the side. I do like how it says ground speed, right? Probably a homage to the Mustang name. You'd also have your odometer and then whatever gear you're in on the side. So, I mean, you have everything you need here, but I still feel like some configurability would be nice. So here you'll notice that you actually have a really interesting display here. This kind of monitors your eyes and your attention. Um, very useful when you have Blue Cruise on. So I'll talk about Blue Cruise for a second here. Very, very cool thing from Ford here as impressive as Cadillac Super Cruise and Tesla's Autopilot, it is actually completely hands-free. You can only use it in certain areas of the US, so it has to be a Blue Cruise enabled area, but around the Chicago area here, it works on almost every major freeway, which is super cool. It does kind of go in and out a little bit though, but it's not too bad. When it goes out, essentially, you just have to put your hand on the wheel, right? When you're using it, completely hands-free, looks very futuristic, very cool. It worked very, very well. I was super impressed with it. Um, yeah, and I hope to, you know, right now it's on Blue Cruise 1.2, which gives you things like being able to signal and it will automatically shift for you. It also like adjusts a little bit if a car is kind of veering into your lane, it'll kind of move your car a little bit out um, to prevent anything from happening. So very, very cool feature. Love Blue Cruise, cannot wait to see what it'll bring in the future. All right, let's talk about the actual interior looks here a little bit. You've got the Mustang logo here. You really don't have any instance of talking about Ford, right? Like. It's, it's not a Ford, it's a Mustang. Um, and yeah, going into the actual uh, you know seats and stuff like that, that's what a lot of people are gonna care about here. You've got really gorgeous stitching all throughout these seats. These seats are a highlight of the interior, in my opinion. Very comfortable, well bolstered, love the quilted pattern, looks very luxurious. This is a special uh, quilted pattern on the California Route 1 trim. It's called Black Onyx and it's really, really comfortable. I love them, they're very plush. I really enjoyed these seats for long car rides. Um, going into the door panels themselves, you also have that same stitching material, which is really cool. Um, you'll notice that huge cloth thing on the side is a speaker cap. Pretty cool, right? It's a unique look, um, but it does get dirty. This entire car interior is fully black and there are no options. It's always gonna be fully black if you get the California Route 1 trim. And uh, it does look kind of nice. I do like that chrome accent that kind of goes throughout the entire side. And it's all soft touch material, which is pretty cool. Um, you've got leather and some soft touch uh, plastics and stuff like that. Otherwise, like it's just not the most luxurious looking thing. For $60,000 plus, kind of unacceptable in my opinion, but for less than $60,000, it becomes a lot more uh, you know, realistic, I think. You do also have this nice accent here. It's kind of a cool aluminum brushed metal thing. You do have stitching right here, which looks very nice. Here is a thing that I don't like. I don't like this weird cloth thing here. It's not actually a speaker cap, it's just a cloth look. So not my favorite thing there, unfortunately. 
Um, but let's talk about the center console stack here. So the 15.5 inch screen here works pretty well. I do like the Apple CarPlay is very large. However, everything is integrated in here, right? You've got your uh, you know, HVAC controls, everything is in here. If you want to look at anything, you have to open it up in this menu, which is super weird in my opinion. I don't really like that. So this is how you set dual um, climate zones. I, it took me forever to figure that out because this little expandy arrow is very, very small. <laughs> Not the most obvious thing. You do have easy access to heated steering wheel and heated seats, of course. And I mean, it's easy to hit this. And what I do like is that this turns into a temperature thing, right? So that's really cool, right? Like I like the adjustability of that. And I mean, it works fine. I do like that you have three level auto uh, climate controls, which gives you uh, different ways to control the fan speed, which is pretty neat. Um, and you do have some quick widgets here, right? These are all the games that you can play. So you've got Sketch, which is pretty fun. You can write whatever you want here. Um, you know, fun way to pass time, I guess. You also have some games, which is pretty cool. Um, very similar to Tesla and stuff like that. Um, yeah, going into the main thing here, you can kind of go between entertainment. You've got YouTube, Sudoku, all this sort of stuff. Apps, this is pretty straightforward, right? Um, it really wants you to think of this as kind of a large iPad or something like that, right? Apple CarPlay looks good. You've got Android Auto, fully wireless for both. Very, very cool. Love the full screen setup here. Very large compared to some of the horizontal ones. And I will compliment on Ford. This is the Sync 4 system, which is just so much better than their old one. Everything is really easy to find. Like all of these things are quite responsive feels good when you're going through them so you can see there's a little bit of lag while things are loading right kind of kind of a smartphone smartphone esque but i do like that literally every setting is just in this one page right some of the other vehicles out there these days just settings are kind of split all over the place right i do like that everything's there this is the 360 surround camera this comes standard in the california route one trim pretty nice um, again, though, I don't like the speakers of this system, so I would still go for the premium trim, most likely for some of those more premium features, like the uh, power lift gate and the Bang & Olufsen sound system. So here you've got 360 camera. It works fine. You've got a few different views that you can change, um, you know, this huge display too. Pretty cool. It's a pretty good high res shot here, and it's very large, right? I just love how big it is. It's very easy to see things from this view. Um, and then up here, you know, you have a few different ways of if you want to focus on a certain area, uh, which is pretty cool. Make sure you don't curb those wheels and you can actually move things like up and down, which is kind of interesting, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, they have some interesting things going on here, but otherwise it looks good, easy to use. I just don't like that everything is integrated in the system, right? There is no way to adjust your temperature and stuff like that from anywhere aside from the actual infotainment system. Center console stack looks fine. It is very streamlined. You do have a lot of storage. This is the wireless charging pad, although it did cook my phone, so don't know how useful it's really going to be. Um, and then you do have a USB-C, USB-A charger there as well that you can use. Um, you've got some more storage down here, kind of like the little pass-through that a lot of other electric vehicles do. You've actually got the same pass-through here as well. You can kind of store a few things here. This is a compartment in there as well that is quite large. There's your little armrest. Works pretty well. Feels, look, feels good. You've got that stitching everywhere. I feel like that's probably one of the more luxurious touches in the cabin is just the, the nice white stitching everywhere. Two cup holders, pretty standard. And then you've got your gear select here. This is the thing that Ford is doing across their entire lineup. Um, this, this interior does look like, okay, if you took away the nice seats, it would look similar to that Ford Escape that I reviewed recently, which is significantly cheaper, but definitely not as nice of a vehicle. But, <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's kind of the one of the things I, I complain about with this interior is that it just doesn't feel as nice as the 60K plus price tag suggests. But once you get below 60K, that is a really big thing, right? Like, and you still have the federal tax credit of 3750, I think right now, um, at least as of right now when I'm filming this. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so pretty cool. You've got the e-brake here, you've got, uh, you know, hazard. And then this one here is um, basically uh, finding parking spots and stuff like that. So I don't know, it's weird that this has a button, but the 360 camera doesn't have a button. Like, I hate having to click into the system for the 360 camera. Super, super weird. It does come on by default uh, when you're about to approach something, but if I want to get into a parking spot really efficiently, I want that 360 camera. All right, and now let's take a look at the steering wheel here. So you've got your blue cruise control things on the side, adaptive cruise control and all of that sort of uh, distance control, lane keep assist, things like that. And on the right side, it's going to be your infotainment control. So skip track, and then this is going to be your volume up and down. Very self-explanatory, very similar to a normal internal combustion engine vehicle. I think a lot of people will like how similar it is. I do really like this feel of the steering wheel. This feels very good. You've got some nice contrast stitching on the inside. 
and uh, everything is easy to use. Like all these are very straightforward, very similar to a normal vehicle. Good segue, it doesn't feel super different like Teslas do. All right, a bit of a random segue before we go into this second row here, but you do actually have a frunk that I didn't show at the beginning when I was going through the exterior. So I'll show you a shot here of what the frunk looks like. Relatively deep, you can definitely fit some grocery bags in there. It's always nice to actually have a frunk unlike some other vehicles. So getting into the second row, you've got a button, but no grab handles. So you have to grab this weird area, right? Not the greatest thing. Um, but going in here, you'll immediately notice the airiness of this thanks to the whole glass pano sunroof. It is so cool. And you have so much leg room here. You have so much space. I really like that. You've also got a USB-C and USB-A back here. I'm using the one in the back because the front one doesn't seem like it's working for me, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, you've got the very similar stitching, very pretty much the exact same door panel in the back here. You've got the same nice quilted look on the rear seat. So definitely a nice place to spend time. This is a great hauler for, you know, a family of four or something like that. More cup holders, armrest, easy to use. But yeah, I just love the glass panel sunroof. Probably one of the more luxurious features in this. That is definitely one of the advantages of the California Route 1 trim. All right, let's talk about how the 2023 Mustang Mach-E is to drive. So with this dual motor setup, you get some great acceleration, right? Zero to 60 in under five seconds for the price of this vehicle is pretty impressive. Again, you do kind of get that with all EVs though, right? You're going to get that quick acceleration with that instant torque, it feels awesome. But you know, I think the sacrifice of this SUV specifically is going to be that it's not going to be as agile as the Mustang Coupe, right? I think <laughs> the Mustang name, it is very controversial and I don't know if I really like it either. I feel like just calling it some sort of different name tag would have been kind of better, but um, you know, I do feel like it kind of lives up to the experience in a way. You do get nice handling, right? It's not going to be nearly as nimble as the uh, Mustang Coupe, you know? I don't think you can expect that because at the end of the day this is an SUV you get some great practicality of this vehicle um, let me see if I can kind of zoom a little bit here uh, so I don't know if you're able to really tell how fast this is but I'll kind of floor it right here and you know it's not quite as fast as some other EVs out there right Tesla Model Y performance is going to be a lot faster of course that competes more with like the Mustang Mach-E GT uh, which I would love to drive someday. I also feel like those are styled really, really well. I love the styling of the GT trim. Um, but yeah, for the California Route 1 trim, you do get that extended range. Very nice, 312 miles of range. I've been getting about 290 or so um, on a full charge, and this is in the heat of summer here in Chicago, so kind of what I would expect. But yeah, the fun factor definitely is still there. It is just going to be more of like a fun SUV, right? It is different from a sedan, from a coupe, right? Like it's just going to feel different. So you can't really expect the exact same one-to-one -one comparison there. Um, but if you're looking for a practical daily driver SUV with a good amount of range, this is a really good option. I still think I'd go for the premium trim over the California Route 1 trim unless you really need that additional like 20 miles of range. Um, I just, the California Route 1 trim is just weird to me because I, if I'm spending $60,000 for a vehicle, I want the nicer sound system. I want some of the more premium features, um, you know, and I don't love the wheels either of this one. I don't really care about the badging and stuff like that, right? So at the end of the day, the premium is a really good option for this um, if you don't really care about that slight bit of extra range. Now let's talk about the ride quality and comfort. I love these California Route 1 seats though. I will say that is probably my favorite part of this trim, um, aside from the extra range, I guess, is going to be these great seats. They look awesome. I love the quilted look. Great contrast stitching all throughout the cabin. They did a great job with that. I wish there were more colors. Um, and, you know, speaking of the color, uh, the interior color is fine, I guess, but I do wish there was like a beige or gray option. Um, the outside, I would definitely go with the electric blue. I love that color. The actual comfort of the vehicle, these seats, like I said, you can sit in these for a long time. I've driven this from Madison to Chicago multiple times now, and uh, it feels good for that long car ride. I wish I had ventilated seats. That would definitely be a more premium feature that I wish a car had, but I mean, at this price range, I wouldn't always expect that. And the actual acceleration is just so quiet, right? That's the thing with EVs that you're never going to find. No matter how smooth of a transmission you have, the you know instant torque and just the gliding feeling of being in an EV is so comfortable, right? And I think that's the thing. It's like it's it's not something you can get in a normal internal combustion engine vehicle. It's just this feels more luxurious and quiet. The car itself is very quiet. I think that's one thing I would really commend uh, that Ford did really well here. Uh, it's just so quiet at a stop. 
it feels almost as quiet as some of those high-end luxury vehicles like the S-Class in my, my Porsche Macan that I daily drive, right? Like, that's really cool to get that level of sound insulation in this vehicle. At higher freeway speeds, I do think the wind noise kind of becomes a bit of a factor. Road noise is going to be a little bit higher too than I think from some of the nicer tires you get out there. Um, but yeah, overall, this car is definitely a pleasant, luxurious experience. And at the sub 60K market, this, is really an attractive deal. I mean, talking about the price cut, that is really interesting, right? Like that, that was very interesting to research about because, you know, as Tesla has been continuing to decrease their prices, Ford has had to respond to that. And getting this to the under 60K market is very important, right? Because 65K is so different, I feel, from like 57, 58K. That's really a price range that this car shines in. The quick acceleration, the luxury features, this gorgeous panel sunroof, blue cruise is such a game changer. All of those things, the tech in this car works really well, blind spot monitors, 360 camera, all of this package feels very compelling for those price points. And while I don't love some parts of the vehicle, I just want to be able to adjust my climate controls and even use my 360 camera without having to touch something on a touch screen that I really can't look at without taking my eyes off the road, right? <laughs> like, it's just, it, it doesn't seem that great. And I think while the center stack area is very clean, I just wish it had a bit more buttons. <laughs> I just wish it had some more physical buttons. So overall, this is a fantastic choice if you're looking for an EV that is still quite similar to an internal combustion engine vehicle, right? You've got a very similar layout in terms of the actual technology. You have a start and stop button. You have a normal gear shift. Um, nothing weird like some of the other EVs do, right? You've got Apple CarPlay, a lot of really great features. So guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out some of my other videos, you can click up here, subscribe down here, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, everyone. Bye.